Hey, I'm Russ. And I'm Steve. Growing up in the 80s, we were introduced to video games, movies, and technology that made a lasting impression on us and forever enriched our lives. I think I'm gonna cry! It's been a fascinating journey to be a part of, one that we constantly treasure. Higher! <laughs> Booty! Our goal is simple. Share our magical moments of discovery and geek out with lovely folks, just like you. Uh, achievement unlocked! So if you crave pixel goodness, memorable moments, and experiences that make your inner child do the happy dance, you've come to the right place. Let's do this! Welcome to Joygasm! Ah, <laughs> yeah! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Joygasm, where we talk about video games, movies, and pop culture. My name is Russ, Xbox Live Toaster 360, and joining me, whispering sweet nothings into your collective ears, Steve, Xbox Live Stevevich, as we begin episode 26 on this July 19th, 2017. If you have any questions, comments, or just want to show us some love, you can find us on Twitter at JoygasmTV and Facebook.com slash JoygasmTV. You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at SoundCloud.com slash JoygasmTV or search JoygasmTV on YouTube. And no matter which platform you use or where you consume the show, please drop us a, a subscription, a thumbs up, or review. It helps us build awareness, which we appreciate very much. And by the way, a big thank you to those who have done so already. We have a fun show planned for you today in video game news. We're going to talk about a deluge of headlines, including the next Fable game, Final Fantasy and Beta, the latest Atari console update, and new Street Fighter and Tekken characters. Movie news includes Starship Troopers, Blade Runner 2049, and Dumbo live action film. Our main topic of the day will be the D23 convention. But first things first, and normally I would say, Steve, how you doing? But we're going to skip that. Instead, we're going to go straight to our good old friend, Brad, who's live at San Diego Comic-Con. <laughs> Bradley, how the heck are you? Oh, man, I'm tired, Russell. I'm tired. You've been here before. You know what it's like to, uh, to do the 20,000, 25,000 step days in downtown San Diego. Uh, yes. But first day of comic-con is in the books uh we had a little preview night last night for wednesday night um but uh today was the very first full day of comic-con 2017 oh yeah. So, yeah that's right that's right having a good time out here having a good time it did amazes you bring me your, every year did you bring your, your did you bring your step counter like you did before you know, I, I've got it on my phone, and uh, I can try to pull it up. So hopefully, we don't get disconnected <laughs> as I uh, as I go into some of these uh, some of these apps. But uh, That's I'm actually kind of kind of curious, to be honest with you. But I would <laughs> guess there we go. Today is almost twenty one thousand steps. Um, nice. All right. And it is seven o'clock. Not even seven o'clock our time. So I, I'm betting. You know, based on where the restaurant is and based on where the hotel is, I'm betting we'll get close to 23,000 by the end of the day. Um, I wonder what that translates into in terms of miles. You know, I just saw it. Hold on, hold on. I'm glad you oh, asked. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Don't jump the gun, Russ. I'm excited. That's right. That's right. 9.9 miles. Oof. So wow. it is, uh, nice. you, you do, you know, that's one thing. And, and San Diego Comic Con is a, a different experience than most of the smaller conventions throughout the country because, uh, just the number, sheer number of people here. You get about 130,000 people every single day, oh, plus yeah. the extra folks downtown. Um, yeah, and you basically do a half marathon on your feet. And, you know, what, what always gets you is you're never doing full steps. It's always the uh, little bit of the march of the penguins, if you will. Yeah, the shuffle. Um, <laughs> just the shuffle. And, you know, sometimes it's nice just to get outside and be able to take that full gait as you go. Um but uh, no, it's been a great day. We actually had a lot of fun. Lined up this morning about three thirty in the morning. I'll give you, <laughs> you know, yes. if if you don't mind, let me, let me run you through a day in the life of please Thursday do Comic Con. Yes. Um, so we lined up. I'm here with my wife and two teenage boys. Uh, lined up about three thirty in the morning, and we were in the eleventh row. And each row probably holds about two hundred and fifty people. 
Mm-hmm. So if you want to ballpark it there, we're, we're you know, 2,500 people back, give or take. And that's at 3.30 in the morning. That's a whole lot of flesh. Uh, that's a whole lot of <laughs> whole lot of something. Um, lot you of know, pe- people end up developing nick- <laughs> developing nicknames like the snorer. Um, <laughs> Man, so. Um, but uh, yes, that, that's how we start the day. Wait in that line for uh, about three three and a half hours, and then they move us inside. And from uh, from the time you get inside. You basically split off and you decide what you're going to do. You can get in line to go to the show floor when that opens at 9. You can get in. uh, Warner Brothers does some autographs. DC Comics was doing some autograph signings. Fox was doing some autograph signings. Um, And then you've got your merchandise. You've got your Hasbro. You've got your Funko. And you've got your Lego. So those are kind of your your different options once you get on the floor. Um, Funko. (laughs) In my mind, Funko is... Like the worst thing that uh, has ever happened to San Diego Comic Con. Um, really, the, the lines. I mean, Russ, it's been a few years since you've been here, and Funko wasn't nearly the uh, the powerhouse that it was uh, three, four years back. There were people who lined up yesterday at noon who did not even get a chance to draw for a Funko wristband. Oh. Um, there were people. So Funko also has a pop up shop in downtown. There were um, two days before it opened, there were about 700 people in line is what they were saying. Um, so th- those are folks who were going to give it 48 hours. It-, it is a phenomenon unlike anything I've ever seen here, and it is absolutely taking over the, uh, the Comic-Con. Well, um, ever, from, there are folks who I work with who actually are huge Funko fans. I, you know, they have their their whole desk is just covered yeah. with different. I mean, they have like Walking Dead Funko, yep. or they have the Star Wars Funko. Like, yeah, I mean, it's just it's huge. It sounds like it's just it's kind of grown into this giant. I don't know, behemoth. I guess for lack of a better word, they are. Uh, I read the other day that Funko actually wants to be a billion dollar company. That is their goal. Wow. And they are on on track to do that. Um, so from humble beginnings, right? Um, but uh, anyway, enough about that. I didn't do Funko. I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> um, so we split up. My wife and I got in the uh, Fox autograph line because we really wanted to get the Legion autograph signing. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was kind of our, uh, our main target, actually, for the entire convention. Love that show. Great show to watch if you guys haven't yet kind of in the X-Men Marvel mutant universe, but it's kind of a little, little trippy, a little different, you know, not your, sure. pop, you know, popcorn and bubblegum type, uh, X-Men. Um, but, uh, so we, we got in that line, waited there for another couple hours. So, so at this point it's closing in on eight o'clock. So we're about four and a half hours after we got in line. And then they started drawing for the, uh, for the Fox autographs. So mm-hmm. we finally get up to the front. They have a very small stack of Legion autographs left, and you get to the front, and they go, okay, you're going to push a button on this machine. You choose heads or tails. If you're right, you get the autograph. If you're not, eh, sucks to be you. Oh, my um, goodness. That's a little different so, from what they did, well, at least when I was there. <laughs> yeah, so in the past, they've done kind of a draw a marble type thing, and it seemed like the odds were about three out of four, one. But, I mean, this is a true... 50 50 you know and then you get up there and you're thinking to yourself okay okay the last three guys were heads which means the next one has to be tails, you know and then you start thinking logically and you go well no but it's always a 50 50 and they go well if i choose heads and it turns out to be tails i'm always going to be wrong you start Um, psyching yourself out yeah (laughs) you do it (laughs) then you start thinking i've waited four and a half hours to push the button on an iphone (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's going to determine whether i have a good start to the day or not but anyway we got lucky both Teresa and i drew the uh drew picked the right heads or tails on our uh, coin flip so she actually grabbed the legion autograph and i took the autograph for a new show coming up on fox called ghosted with uh, oh. adam scott yeah adam scott and craig robinson craig robinson most folks know from uh from the office he played daryl philbin on the office yeah Um, right right and then uh, adam scott was uh, parks and rec he was kind of amy poehler's uh soulmate if you will i guess that's the easy way to remember him but he's been in a lot of the uh you know kind of light comedy type uh movies Um, wasn't he also 
Was he also in Hot Tub? Uh, there's a Hot Tub movie. Hot he Tub was. Time Machine. Hot Tub, hot time, tub machine. time Machine. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> Actually, I think both of them were. Now that you say that, with uh, good old uh, Marty McFly's dad, whose na- name I'm just blanking on right now. I want to call him George McFly, but I can't think of the actor's oh, name. Oh yeah, what is his um, name? I'll find out. I know. I know who you're talking Chris, about. Crispin. Is it Crispin Glover? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. So who is uh, got to be the strangest man in Hollywood, but uh, hilarious in every movie that he's in. Um, yeah. So so that was the start to our morning. So we finished drawing. And meanwhile, my kids had gone. Their entire goal was to get the Walking Dead autographs. The Walking Dead. Now, 50-50, right? So I waited three and a half, four and a half hours. We get up there, 50-50 shot. I'll tell their story real quick, and then we'll kind of finish with the rest of how my day went. Sure. Um, to, to get the Walking Dead autograph, you have to do the booth. So you wait in line to get into the booth, and then at the end, you draw a ticket, and you may or may not win. Um, now, the challenge with the Walking Dead booth is the line is always capped. That's one of the favorite sayings here at Comic-Con is, oh, yeah. the line is capped. Keep on moving. Come back in 20 minutes. Yeah, um, I remember that. So they keep people moving. My kids were able to get into the booth 11 times each today. So they drew oh a total of 22 times. We had wow. another another friend in our group who drew 11 or 12 times. And then one other in our group who drew three or four times. So combined, we have about 35, 36 draws in the Walking Dead booth today. We have zero the- hits. Oh. Zero. <laughs> oh, that um, sucks. sucks. So, Terrible. so, yeah, you want to talk about awful odds i mean that's it just makes the 50 50 feel great right um, yeah so it's amazing they gave out walking dead gave out a total of 30 tickets today um throughout the entire day and then they've got 20 more for tomorrow so that's kind of our plan in the morning is to help the kids try to you know i say kids they're almost 16 you know it's, i don't want people <laughs> listening to go so you have like some three-year-olds that are doing walking yeah, dead okay. I'll I'll cut you. that is just you, horrible <laughs> You do you. Whatever works. Parenting yeah. 101. Anyway. Uh, I do remember but, that, though, from my days at a Comic-Con where, like, oh, yeah. th- there, there would be someone in the group who would be having bad luck. It's, it's, it's so yep. weird, but it's almost like on a daily basis, there'd be one person in your group who just would just not be getting anything that they'd be striving for. And so what's kind of a cool, I, I suppose, tra- uh, Comic-Con tradition is the other folks in the group will then band together to try and hook that person up. So that way they have some kind of positive thing that happened. And it's, it's really, it actually works out really nicely because by the end of the whole entire experience, everybody has something that they can look back on fondly. So. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think I, I, I feel bad for the folks who do comic con solo or even just in a couple, because it really is a, uh, you know, the odds just aren't good. You have to team up and you have to hook each other up and, you know, that's really the only way that everybody can kind of get at least something that they want. But uh, the next step for us, I just kind of spent a lot of time walking the floor of the uh, convention hall today. Um, you know, did a little bit of shopping in kind of the artist alley area. Picked oh, up cool. a little. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, good to see the artists. I, lo- I like seeing the smaller guys, you know, and they're out there. And, you know, there's a guy named uh, Patrick Ballestros, and he does uh, kind of cartoony takes on pop culture if you will so he had like a buffy thing he had a wonder woman thing he's got a disney thing dropping every day and the guy is so humble and grateful that he's got a line of 20 people at all times you know and he's walking the line and he's just like guys how long are you waiting i don't want you to wait too long but i really appreciate it it means a lot to me and you know so to have somebody like that just uh you know it it makes you feel good you know um so did that, grabbed some lunch, but then uh, one of our friends, Christopher, and I actually won tickets today to go see Conan O'Brien tape again? his show. So, yeah, we went yesterday and we went again today. Nice. Um, so I'll give you the quick rundown on those. But uh, basically, Conan is doing four shows here in San Diego that started airing last night and will air, I think, through Saturday or maybe Sunday. Um and it's uh, yesterday the show featured uh, Will Smith and the stars of a new Netflix show called Bright. And I have to say, you know, I'm not going to dig too much into the show itself. I've never been a, a, a Will Smith fan. Um, mm. he, 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 to me, has always come across just a little bit uh, dickish, I guess is the word I would use. <laughs> uh, 
But I, I gained a lot of respect for him yesterday because during the commercial breaks as they're filming, it's actually kind of weird. As they film, they actually take like a four minute commercial break and you're like, oh, yep. I thought you just paused and picked it back up. But he actually went out into the audience. He was taking selfies, giving hugs, high fives. Oh, and I gained nice. a, lot, you know, a lot of respect for the guy because it's like, you know, everybody else that I've seen on that stage, they'll wave a little bit, but everybody else just kind of chills. Their guys come out and, you know, touch up their makeup and give them a little bit of water and the words of encouragement. You're doing great, buddy. You know, keep mm-hmm. going. Um, but no, I have man, to interrupt he, he you was, real quick. Yeah, I please. remember th- the story that, that you're, you're telling us right now reminds me of, um, I think it was the last time I was with you guys at Comic-Con. And uh, it was when the Edge of Tomorrow was being promoted at the Warner Brothers booth. And I think um, our friend Candace scored a, a ticket to be able to get an autograph from the cast. Yeah. And I remember watching yes. the cast walk out one by one and each one would just kind of give a brief wave and then duck into the Warner Brothers booth. And I remember when yep. Tom Cruise came out, he was, of course, <laughs> the biggest star. And we were all really enamored with him just because of how he engaged the crowd. And as a result, like everybody was just blown away by like how he just, instead of just making a beeline for the booth, he actually went over to the crowd, shook hands, took selfies, like exactly what you're describing with uh, Will Smith. And I think that, that that is when you witness a certain caliber of, Hollywood celebrity who gets it, who understands, yep. hey, you need to you need to make time for your fans because those are the folks who put you in your place in the first, you know, in the first place. So anyway, Again, continue. no, dude, I, I totally agree with you. And I think, uh, you know, I remember that time with Tom Cruise. and I, I just remember the security guys like turning bright white as he's <laughs> climbing under the security lines to like go hug and high five people and yep. you know, take pictures. They're like, oh, oh, sir, sir, no, no, you're, you're like a multimillionaire superstar. Yeah, anyway, so. Um, but well, anyway, the cool so thing yeah, about that, too, was the fact that the crowd actually was nice about it, too. You didn't see him get mauled or anything like that. Like, no. everybody was just really appreciative of the fact that he's, you know, literally going to their side of the, the red yep. tape, so to speak. It was I could cool. just see people yeah. tearing off, like, little articles of, of Tom Cruise's clothing. I got, yeah. <laughs> I got a piece of his jacket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but he wears that special Scientology yeah. clothing that doesn't tear. So it's all yeah, there you go. It yeah. also doesn't age you as long as you run with like your hands chopping air. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, sorry. Back to uh, back to Conan. So yesterday was pretty cool. It was uh, the cast of Bright, which is a new movie coming to Netflix, which is just blows my mind that a Will Smith big budget movie is going to be only on Netflix. Um, so awesome! I knew that was coming. Dude, the, the the world is changing. You know, yep. it's. It's great to see that first run movies, big budget movies are going to be on Netflix. And uh, I know nothing about this movie. All I know is uh, Will Smith described it as training day meets Lord of the Rings. Hey. Oh, wow. Okay. And all I right. kind of went, all right. So it's, it's directed by the guy watch. who wrote training day. Um, so there's enough there for me to at least go, all right, hey, it's on Netflix. I'll click the button. I'll watch it, you know. Sure. Um so yesterday at Conan, the other piece was uh, Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles from uh, Supernatural. Um, uh-huh. Big fan. Watched that show since day one. So that was a lot of fun. Um, those guys are always a good interview. And then today at Conan was the cast of the upcoming Kingsman 2 movie. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. Oh, dude. King- Kingsman 1 is one of my favorite movies of the last two or three years. Mm-hmm. Um and that was one that just flew under the radar. And then what, I remember watching it, my jaw dropped the entire film. The speed of action, the way that the scenes were shot, it reminded me a lot of Baby Driver, if you will. You know, kind of that stylistic action, but with a there, good yeah. story. There so, are a lot of uh, similarities there, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that was kind of <clears throat> our, uh, you know, that was today was the cast of Kingsman 2. So I had a good time with that. Now, one of the things that does draw a ton of people to Conan is that is the only place to get the exclusive Conan Funko Pops this year. Um, (laughs) And as I mentioned before, Funko is just, uh, they're everywhere. So people line up, and I mean, it was a mob getting out of the theater because everybody (laughs) wanted to buy. I mean, literally, there are people there with $100 bills in their hands going, I'll give you 100 bucks for your pop. I mean, it's insane. It's I've never seen anything like that. The pops from two years ago 
on eBay, a couple of them still sell in like the 225, 250 range. Um, so crazy, crazy stuff. Um, Would you say it's, it's pretty much like the today's version of Beanie Babies? I, I think it's Beanie Babies on steroids. Um, okay. You know, it, it would be Beanie Babies if there were certain Beanie Babies you could only get in certain places for one time, you know. And yeah. that was the, the thing with Beanie Babies. And God, I'm going back 20 years on memory here, was that, <laughs> you know, with that, it was like, I think it was what Hallmark always had those, kind of those types of stores. And, you know, you would just wait and hope that they had them if that was what you were into. Um, but with this, it's, you know, hey, they've got an exclusive for New York Comic Con. They've got an exclusive at Hot Topic. And, you know, every store, every event seems to have exclusives. And, uh, you know, some of these things go for, you know, tens of hundreds, if not a thousand dollars a piece. Um, so it's got a it's got a stronger secondary market, I think, than Beanie Babies ever did. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that was kind of our, uh, our start to our day. Meanwhile, while I was out at Conan, Teresa actually got both the ghosted signature autograph session as well as the Legion autograph session. Um, so said they were both great. Adam Scott was real nice. Craig Robinson was real nice. And then the cast from Legion was like the nicest group of people ever. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so yeah, Candace, one of our other friends is a big Dan Stevens fan and he is the, uh, the lead in Legion. And of course he was the beast and then he was, uh, Matthew Crawley in Downton Abbey. Um, mm-hmm. so, you know, becoming a big star, um, and she actually got a picture with him. So she's just been on uh, cloud nine. Um, <laughs> so does mother um, Teresa really love herself some Downton Abbey? You know, that was a show that we, uh, we tried to watch and I just couldn't get that. My wife absolutely loves Downton Abbey. Like every time I hear some sort of British voices going on, I'm thinking, up, oh, yep, she there is. She's watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, I and mean, there's people who love it. I just, to me, it was a little too soapy. Um, so just, it wasn't my thing. And it was one of those shows I think we watched two seasons of and just kind of other things came on. So we never went back to it. Um, but that, in a nutshell, is kind of what today encompassed. Um, so a lot of running back and forth, a lot of, uh, you know, got a couple autographs. Um, so that was fantastic. Um, sitting down now for some dinner. But I took some video. I'll upload it on the Facebook page here of the, uh, yeah, the please Hall, do. Hall H lines. Not for Friday, but for Saturday. There are <laughs> probably... <laughs> 1,500 people already camped out on the marina, and they've been there all day today to get into Hall H, which is kind of the big, you know, that that is the premier room Golly, on man. Saturday. That um, is so, these so guys, hardcore. Do, they, they give up two days of their con to go sit out to wait to get into the audience for uh, for the Saturday panels. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. Saturday's got some real strong stuff. It's got Westworld, which is obviously huge now um stranger things too it's got all of the marvel um marvel universe stuff so i mean there's some pretty good stuff coming on saturday as well as dc justice league aquaman rumor is matt reeves is matt reeves is here um to direct you know he's directing the batman with ben Mm -hmm. affleck your favorite actor russell ben affleck um (laughs) (laughs) Um, but uh, rumor is he's here so they may show you know some some behind the scenes or at least talk a little bit about what they're planning for, uh, for the Batman. And, um, yes, I mean, Saturday is going to be big. You know, that's one of the things with the San Diego comic-con Thursday starts pretty slow. Today's a big day for kind of the smaller, more niche type TV shows, a lot more of the shopping. And then it kind of moves into TV tomorrow. Tomorrow's the big TV day. And then Saturday is usually the big blockbuster, Oh yeah, you know, knock them out type, uh, type presentation. So I got to tell our our listeners here that, uh, back when I was going to comic con, it was considered hardcore. Like if you just actually spent the night on the concrete in order to get into like hall H the next day. So the fact that Brad has just told us that there are people who are now willing to stay in that line and sleep in that line for 48 hours. Yeah. That is the, I've have that's never the, heard of that before. That's the new hardcore. Yeah. Well, it, and it does like that every year. <laughs> it gets like more and more extreme like that. I can't believe it. 
You're exactly right. We were talking about that this morning. I mean, we, we lined up this morning at 3.30. And where I'm standing, I can actually see the embassy suites that we all stayed at a few years back. And, dude, yep. I, I remember in the morning we'd get up. We'd have the embassy, embassy suites breakfast. So, you know, whatever, 6 a.m., 6.30. Then we'd head over, and we'd still get good stuff. Nowadays, I mean, even 3.30 on a Thursday, which is the lightest day other than Sunday, barely got us what we were there for. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it's at Man. some point, it, it's <laughs> things have to break. Um, if they don't break, I will, because I'm not doing a whole lot earlier than 3.30. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that, that's kind of the quick rundown, or not so quick. That's the long, long-form version rundown of uh, what's going on here at San Diego Comic-Con. So I will... Oh, uh, that's I, fine. Yeah, I will. I do have to run. I've got uh, people texting me saying our uh, our dinner table is ready, and I'm apparently I'm holding things up. But uh, oh I'll let yeah, you guys, please go enjoy your dinner. Yeah. yeah. No, you guys continue the podcast. We will talk more on Sunday. I'll give you the rundown of the additional TV shows as well as uh, movies. Uh, I'm going to spend some more time in the sideshow booth. Got to hit up Art Germ. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff that uh, that has to be done over the next few days. Um, the nice thing is, like I said earlier, Legion was kind of our top target for the convention, top realistic target, I guess I would say. I'd yep. love to get Westworld, but I don't think it's possible. Um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of got that box checked. So now it's time to just go, uh, go have some fun. So awesome. Right on. Well, guys, Thank I you, appreciate Brad. you having me on. Thank you. And I'll get a few more videos up there. Try trying to show the true magnitude of the, uh, the sea of humanity that is San Diego comic-con. Oh, yeah. I know. We, we would all very much appreciate that. The more, the better. So enjoy yourself. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks, Brad. See, See you. All right. Bye. Whoa. My friggin' goodness. <laughs> yeah. How awesome Lee. is that, huh? That was a pretty juicy, uh, was that 15 minutes? That seemed like it was longer. No, that was, it was, it was probably a good 20 oh, minutes, 20, man. 25 minutes. And see, that was actually just a day and a half's worth. And I'm sure he was probably leaving some stuff out that was a bit smaller. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it gives you a, a, just a really good idea of... Um, just how epic it is to go to San Diego Comic Con. It, there, literally everything is there that you could possibly want to find out about or enjoy. That's entertainment, and I think I mentioned this in our previous episode. It used to start out where it was just comics, yeah. and understandably so, it's a comic convention. Right. But nowadays, you have all the movie studios that are there. You have all the gaming companies that are there. You have artists. Artist Alley has been there for a while. Yeah. But, um, now even like music artists are starting to have a, a footprint there as well. So the whole thing is just so fun. The only thing is, is you got to really make sure that you budget for it because you can easily spend multiple thousands of dollars well, and, uh, it's I pretty intense. So budget your money and budget your time. Cause there's only like he was saying that you've told me before, there's only so much time and in, in the day and so much stuff you can see. So, uh, I think like Brad was saying, he has to, you know, figure out, okay, what's most important to me? What's priority number one? What's priority number two? You know, because, it, you know, it's going to take time to walk to where you got to go. It's going to take time to stand in line for however long it's going to take, Yeah, uh, you know, to get what you want. Well, and the fun thing about this, too, is the fact that you and I have been mentioning Brad now for 25 episodes. This is the 26th mm -hmm. episode, and it's mm -hmm. been... Um, a goal of ours to be able to get him involved into the Joygasm family. And, and it's fantastic because Brad is very much plugged into all things entertainment. I mean, the guy goes to literally every show he lives in Southern California. So he's pretty lucky to be able to, you know, be able to at a moment's notice, pick up and go. So he was at D 23. He's going to comic con. He was going to wonder con. And also just from a gaming standpoint, I mean, I think we've talked about uh, a couple of occasions. I mean, the guy has like this epic gamer score on Xbox Live. I, it, what was it? Something like 180,000 or something like that? 150, 180, something like that. Yeah. There, there, there's two commas in it, Russ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 for one, am very much pleased to have him um, act as a kind of a, a correspondent for us just because we can't get everywhere at this point. And that is actually something that's worth mentioning, too, is the fact that long term, 
we here at Joygasm are looking forward to being able to eventually uh, receive funding to be able to save up our budgets and be able to go to the, these things in person. That way we can even provide all of you lovely listeners um, additional content, just Absolutely. more than you can shake a fish at. <laughs> we'll just say that. <laughs> But I really appreciate him being on it. And uh, just like what he said, too, we will have him back on episode 27 to give us a bit of a recap on the the subsequent days that he is going to be there. So I look forward to hearing more. You know, Russ, if you and I both end up going, we can take sleeping shifts and line. That's true. Sure. <laughs> Come on, I can just see you like shuffle up to me and like keep me... Hey, wake up. <laughs> you can go back to the, the hotel. I'll take, you know, uh-huh. I'll take over. You know, you, I give you the sleeping bag. I shuffle back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, like there, uh, it, it is really incredible to see the dedication that the fans have. I remember the first time I was going, I was thinking to myself, oh, I'm, I'm a hardcore fan. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, all yeah, these people got this nothing on me. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally going to smoke everybody. And I get there and I realize, oh, no, I'm not. Yeah. Like there are people who, completely redefined to me what it is to be a hardcore fan. Yeah. And that's awesome. I mean, it's really, it's, it's a, it's humbling in a good way to see that. And I just, I just enjoy it. I just love seeing it. I will say though, it is a little frightening though, that there are people who are willing to sleep on the concrete for 48 hours. That's crazy. I have a sneeze coming on. Oh oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Woo. Man. Ugh. You want a tissue? <laughs> I have the tissues right here, Russ. I just felt my brain slosh around in my noggin. Your nose came off a little bit. You got to readjust that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like uh, what he said about Will Smith and uh, and that show that's coming up. Number mm-hmm. one, because I, I I do think it's important that celebrities take the time and just go see your your fans who are buying the movie tickets, who are waiting in line to see you, yeah. both at the movie theater and at Comic-Con. I mean, that's why you're making the millions right there. So you know what? Suck it up. Yeah. It, it's not hard work just to go out there, take a few selfies. Um, some people get man, it. I know some people really get it and some people just don't. And like, like let's just say, you know, your, your Tom Cruise example. Tom Cruise has come out with some great movies and then lately, and then sometimes he's just come out with some okay movies. But man, I tell you, if you met Tom Cruise and he took the time to be like, yeah. hey, I'm not going to charge you anything. Come on, let's get a picture. I would go see every one of Tom Cruise's movies. I yeah. felt, I would feel like I know him personally. Oh, after yeah. That, you know? So there's a guy, uh, really quick. Um, Carrie Ells was someone who I met. Yeah, um, that's right. I remember. Yeah. Go did, I, did I tell you this story? Or I'll, I'll tell the listeners. Tell, tell about it again. This. So uh, one of my favorite memories from going to San Diego Comic-Con was that I was able to get into a signing for, uh, I can't remember what the name of the the movie was, but it was a DC cartoon movie that came out three years ago or something like that. Anyway, Carrie Ells was one of the voices of one of the, the superheroes. And I, I, like I said, I, I would have to pull it out of my, um, my print drawer just to see uh, which character he was. But the point is, as I'm going around, and getting the uh, autographs from the different. Uh, why? Why are you pointing at me? Carrie, I and mean, just in case someone doesn't know who Carrie Ells is. Oh, Carrie Ells. For those of you who don't know, uh, one of the most cherished films, The Princess Bride. Indeed, Carrie Ells was the the um, dreaded pirate Roberts. He, and, no, uh, no, he was the sweet Wesley. Well, that too. Yes, <laughs> yeah. the sweet Wesley. <laughs> Uh, Continue, but anyway, he he was also in. Uh, I think it was in Liar Liar. He was the the kind of quasi love interest of Jim Carrey's wife. Remember that they were yeah. trying to go somewhere, and he just he was a good guy in, in the film. It was just one of those uh, not meant to be kind of things. But anyway, uh, going back to Comic Con, I was in line. I was going around getting the the, the autographs from the different uh, voice talent, and I get to him. And he immediately just just engages me. He's like, hey, how are you? How are you? And he's looking me right in the eye. He's not being dismissive or anything. And I tell him, I actually, I actually go into talking about, hey, I just want you to know that the Princess Bride is one of the biggest staples in my family, that we watch that. We just constantly we i've lost count how many times we've watched it and, and it's just it's seriously one of the cornerstones to my upbringing as a kid and he was very thankful for that very gracious he's like oh thank you very much that's, that's terrific and and he starts talking to me about how the the experience was for him shooting on set and with the so director cool. and oh um goodness. talking about andre the giant and oh uh, yeah um it was it was just um 
really cool how he was easily probably the most recognizable name up there on, on the, the table. And at the same time, he was also the most engaging. There, there were, there were a couple of people up there who wouldn't even look at me when they would sign like, or, or, so, or they would be talking to one of their, their cohorts there. And I would have to kind of, <clears throat> kind of thing yeah. in order for them to like actually sign the another the autograph, another autograph, yeah. another autograph. Yeah. And uh, so you, so you really see a difference between the two. And furthermore, I just have to say this, as I'm talking to Carrie Ells, my wife is next to me getting um, the same kind of poster signed by all the folks. And he apparently was listening to my wife's chit chat with the other actor that was sitting next to him at the same time that he was talking to me. So when my wife got to him, he already knew her name. He already knew what they were talking about. So then he started engaging her with that. And, and, and as a result, my wife was just like, Oh my gosh, like, this wow. is, you know, and, and she was able to chat with him for a while too. And we, and we both walked away just being really impressed by, um, that is so cool. the way that, that he conducts himself. So yeah. anyway, let's get into some movie news. How about that, Steve? I just have one, one, one more thing to say. Oh, I almost, no, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be almost quick. started oh, the music in... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, lucky wee man. You know, when you watch a movie, an actor acts the way that they're directed to act, right? Mm -hmm. And so you might fall in love with the person that you see on screen, but the person you see on screen might not be the person you see in real life. And so that whole experience with you just cemented the fact that, you know, this, this guy, Carrie, is a good human being on screen and off screen. You're not just seeing like a, you know, a, a liar in a sense. I don't know about that. I know that's a terrible word, but an actor doing whatever he wants mm -hmm. to do. You're actually seeing a good person who is an actor. Right. You know? Yeah. You, when you, it's, it seems to be few, at least, okay. And to be fair, in my experience, um, those type of, of people are few and far between right. because at that point, a lot of those people are millionaires. They yep. absolutely love the attention that they receive Goes on a daily basis. Stuff, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They, they the egos are, are just as large as their wallets. Yeah, and so yeah. But the, thankfully, there are people like that who do really just enjoy their job and enjoy yep. uh, their fans. So. Yeah. Anyway, you. I'll give you permission to cue the music now. Oh hey, thanks a lot. Here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> To start things off in gaming news, Fable Fortune release date delayed. Fable Fortune, the collectible card game set in the Fable universe, has been delayed to July 25th. The Fable spinoff was previously scheduled to come to PC in early access and Xbox One and Xbox game preview on July 11th, but due to, quote, an administration hiccup, developers... Media Tonic and Flaming Foul Studios aren't able to launch the Xbox One version of the game this week. A Kickstarter for Fable Fortune, which started as a secret project following the closure of Lionhead Studios, launched last year. The Kickstarter campaign quickly ended when additional funding was secured to help make the title a reality. This is something that I'm personally curious about just because, you know me, I love Gwent. I love those, uh, like, there's another card game that escapes me for the moment, but... Um, I'm really curious to see that because Fable is one of my favorite action RPGs out there. I think it's a real charming persona that they've cultivated for the game. Sure. So I want to be able to see how this thing comes out. So I'm going to be keeping a, an eye on that one. Square Enix announces Final S Fantasy closed Square Enix. Beta. That's right. <laughs> Square Enix. Uh, Jordan Serrani reports that closed beta for, it's, I think it's... Dissidia Final Fantasy will take place in the coming months, Square Enix announced at Evo 2017. The announcement was accompanied by a new trailer featuring a message from Square Enix director Takeo Kujiroka and producer Ichirio Hazama. The publisher didn't reveal specific dates for the closed beta, only saying it will be held in the next couple of months. Final Fantasy NT was announced last month for PlayStation 4. The arcade fighting game comes to console with over 20 playable characters from the world of Final Fantasy, an offline mode, and a new story mode written... Oh, man, I'm going to try my, my hardest to say this name. By Kazushiki Nojima. I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly. I, I gave it a shot. Uh, the team-based brawler is expected to hit PlayStation 4 in early 2018. So there you go, Steve. You yeah, have... I'll give it a shot. You got a Final Fantasy For fighting sure. game. Yeah. 
Hey, if they got some, I, I mean, they have plenty of characters. Barrett, Sephiroth, Cloud. Frick. <laughs> <laughs> this, this might be the one game that will like slowly but surely bring you back into yeah. the fighting full yeah. under the, the, the guise of Final Fantasy. I, I, I would definitely pick either pick that up or give it a at least a try for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Atari reveals first images, more details of its new Atari Box console. Atari has revealed the first full images of its new Atari Box console and teased a few more details about what it will be. The console will feature modern internal specs, allowing it to include classic games as well as deliver current game content. The console will feature an HDMI output, four USB inputs, and an SD card slot. It will come to be released as a good, oh, excuse me, as a wood grain edition or a black and red edition. <laughs> yep. I, I do think it's worth noting that it cannot accept an original Atari cartridge, though, which is yeah. a little bit of a bummer there. But I get it's not it. like uh, many people will have those, right. those Atari cartridges. Yeah, no. Anymore. Have you seen the pictures of the new console? Uh, I did see a couple, yeah. I think it looks pretty sweet, actually. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, my, my expectations were a bit low. But then I was looking at it and I was like, dude, I like both of them. I like the wood grain vintage look. And then the other one with the kind of the black and the red. And I think I do the black and the red, honestly, just because that's how I remember Atari. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting curious now. Yeah. At first, at first I was like, yeah, that's probably going to be some sort of like, you know, NES classic mini style thing. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, huh. Uh, I think the probably the first question for me would be, are they only going to have first party support? Or are they going to be fishing for third party? And if so, with either of those, then what kind of games ultimately will come to the yeah. system? So, Anyway, moving right along. Street Fighter V's next character is a Final Fight crossover. Muscle Man Abigail from Final Fight. Remember him? He was one of the bosses from Final Fight. Is stomping his way into Street Fighter V hmm. next week on July 25th. In Final Fight, Abigail was a member of the Mad Gear Gang. Remember the Mad Gear Gang? Wow. Isn't that like an old relic? Uh, and he ran a scrap metal yard in the Metro City Bay Area. Remember that Metro City Bay Area? Good grief. <laughs> Man. The stage That's outside right. his garage will be re released as a stage on July 25th as well. I mean, do you remember him? Like, he, he was a guy, I think he was I like, think so. the, it was either first level or second level, somewhere around there. Yeah. Wasn't he kind of like an orange outfit? I think. Yeah, he, Maybe I think I'm he, wrong. Was, he was dressed a little outrageously, I think. But Yeah, man, I remember buying Final Fight for the Sega CD when I was like in sixth grade trying to get that past mom and dad. You shut up. I'm like, oh, they don't say it, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, they don't say it. They're not cussing. Actually, that was really cool too because the, for the Sega CD version, they were able to score the character Guy. Yeah. So you had, uh, who, who was it? It was Guy and was then Guy Cody. Was Cody and, and Hagar. 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 Yeah. yeah. Hagar yeah. was the, the dad. He was the dad. Yep. Okay. Street Fighter V also is uh, getting new stages and costumes later this <laughs> month. Uh, looks like it could be on July 25th as well. According to Capcom's recent blog post, three of the outfits and one of the two new stages are inspired by old Street Fighter titles. The stage in question is Ryu's home level Suzaku Castle, which first appeared in Street Fighter II. That was actually one of my favorite stages. You know what I'm hearing in my mind right now is... Um, is Hagar. I'd always play Hagar. Yeah. And then, you know, button mash like crazy. Yeah, yeah. So it would be a, a one, two, three, and then he would do a spinning like, you know, fist, yeah. like helicopter yeah. fist. Uh -huh. And he would always go, Rah! so yeah. you'd go, pew, pew, <laughs> like that times like 20,000. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> awesome. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Me. The retro style costumes for Alex and Buki <laughs> are reminiscent of their Street Fighter 3 looks, while Jury's outfit comes from the Street Fighter 4. Each of the costumes will cost $3.99 uh, USD, $3.99 uh, in terms of pound, and $3.49 for Euro. Pricing for Suzaku Castle stage has not, though, been revealed yet. The other set of costumes and the second new stage are inspired by the upcoming Capcom Pro Tour, Guile. Ryu and Ken will get new outfits, and the new stage is the Kanzaku. Oh, I'm sorry, Kanzuki Family Stadium, which I don't remember what that one looked like, but I'm sure it's awesome. Isn't that one? I think. Okay, go ahead. I think I remember which one that is off the top of my head. I wasn't a very uh, good Street Fighter player, but I think wasn't that one with the fences, the fencing all around, and it was kind of dark, remember. and there was a spotlight. It was kind of a, it looked like a cage match. 
I I could be wrong, but I remember I mean, I, that something along the lines of that. I remember Vega's stage as being kind of a more of a cage match because he could climb he on could the fence, climb on the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, come yeah. down and hit you. Uh, Tekken adding Fatal Fury's geese as next DLC character, so not to be outdone. Tekken 7's next DLC character is Fatal Fury's Geese Howard. The character will be available for purchase sometime this winter as part of Tekken 7's second batch of add-on content. Pricing is not yet known. Geese Howard first made his debut in the 1991. I remember playing this in the arcade. 1991 SNK classic Fatal Fury King of Fighters. You can check out gameplay footage of the fighter below where Geese reveals he has a particular problem with one of Tekken's uh, longest running characters, Hayachi Mashima. You remember who? You remember Hayachi, right? Hayachi. Yeah, Hi yeah. There you go. And that about does it for gaming news. I say we begin to segue right into movie news. What do you think, Steve? Let's do it, Russ. All right, here we go. I think I might have to pick up Tekken Seven. I think I'm going to wait till, uh, and I'm, I'm more of a, in a position to buy it. But uh, I think it's time. I, I would say you are correct. And if you do, you need to bring it over to Mikasa because I would love to check it out myself. Yeah, what I think I might do is uh, sneak over here while you're slaving away and uh, go ahead and install it on your hard drive so that uh, when the day comes, I'll be like, oh, but first, doink, and push play. And you're like, what is this? That's a surprise that I would love to see. Starship Troopers, Trader of Mars exclusive trailer. This is interesting when I saw this because it's not a live action yeah, it's, movie. Yeah. It's, it's a CG movie. It's right. almost like Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. It. Yeah. Uh, Alex Osborne reports Sony Pictures Home Entertainment has announced that Starship Troopers Trader of Mars will be available on digital on August 22nd and will be released on DVD, Blu-ray, and as a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray combo pack on September 19th. Additionally, the new CG animated sequel will be shown in select theaters for a special one-night event courtesy of Sony Pictures and Fathom Events on August 21st. Uh, I got some more details on this. Actually, Starship Troopers Trader of Mars sees Johnny Rico, who is uh, you know, played by Casper Van Dien. He comes back. He's voicing the character again. That's cool. And Dizzy uh, Flores. Remember Dizzy? I remember. Dina wait, Meyer? wait, 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 wait. I Th thought she died. Well... Apparently she's back from war. This, yeah. I thought. She, okay. Anyway, go ahead. You know, I thought, like I, I said, you never in the storytelling. Man. you never know. I mean, she was. Yeah, bring her back. Sure. I mean, I just. I, I always yeah. liked Dizzy. Dizzy was one of my favorite characters. Uh, let's see. In a fight to protect Mars from a bug attack, uh, looks like Ed Numir wrote the script and Shinji Aramaki from uh, Oh Appleseed Alpha. That's I have that movie. That's a cool movie. Mm -hmm. And Masaru Matsumoto from uh, Castlevania Judgment co-directed the movie. Sweet. The Blu-ray release includes a making of a uh, uh, featurette, interviews with um, some of the cast and crew, and several other bonus features, including a photo gallery and deleted scene. The 4K Ultra HD disc features Dolby Vision HDR and Dolby Atmos audio support. Those attending the San Diego Comic-Con, hey, this week can get a glimpse at Starship Troopers Trader of Mars as a panel held on Saturday, July 22nd will feature exclusive footage of the upcoming movie. Starship Troopers 20th Anniversary Edition is also coming and will be released on September 19th on 4K Ultra HD. In addition to a copy of the film on Blu-ray, this anniversary release includes classic bonus features, including 19, count them, 19 featurettes. <laughs> commentary from the director and cast, deleted scenes, and more. Last year, it was reported that Sony is developing a Starship Troopers reboot that will draw from Robert A. Heinlein's 1959 sci-fi novel, but won't be a remake of the 1997 original. So that, there is more info there than you can shake a Starship hat at. <laughs> helmet, I should say. Starship Trooper helmet at. Starship Trooper battle rifle. So for this... <laughs> <laughs> the only good bug is a dead bug. That's right. Um, I'm going to put the music on hold here for a second because um, the next particular article revolves around Blade Runner 2049, specifically the fact that they have a new trailer out, Steve. I know this. Wait, did you already watch it? <laughs> Actually, I started watching it and then I stopped. Oh, I'm on. I'm, and, that, and that's truth be told. Guilty. I, I don't stop. 
Well, I'm going to cue this up because I actually decided to hold off because I wanted to watch it with you. Aw, we were of one mind. <laughs> it, it does make you feel like, I don't know, <laughs> you is very general. It does make me feel like the original film, like I felt back watching that one, uh-huh. where it's kind of odd. It, it's got this unnerving feeling to it, mm-hmm. which I don't get watching a whole lot of movies. Um, but watching the trailer, I, you, I start to feel the same feeling I felt when I watched the original. All right, well, let's let's take a look. For those of you who are listening, you'll be able to check this out um, either on your, if you have an iPhone, you can check it in the, the trailers app or just go on to YouTube. I'm sure it's there, but let's, let's give it a little look-see here. Let's give it a whirl. I thought you might be able to help me with the case. Any idea where I could find him? Your police plan on taking me in. I would much prefer that to the alternative. Every leap of civilization was built off the back of slaves. Replicants are the future, but I can only make so many. I had the luck, and he has the key. I think I found him. That's not possible. If this gets out, we've bought ourselves a war. You're a cop. I did your job once. Things were simpler then. What do you want? I want to ask you some questions. What happened? I covered my tracks. Scrambled the records. We were being hunted. By who? They know you're here. You do not know what pain is yet. You will learn. Bring it to me. This breaks the world. We have to go. I'm coming with you. The future of the species is finally unearthed. Well, that looks pretty uh, amazing. (laughs) Remember, they made a Blade Runner PC game. That was actually pretty cool. It had, uh, uh, I think, pre-rendered backgrounds back when they did that that kind of thing with mini games. Oh yeah, had some environmental effects, and you were the you know Harrison Ford Harrison Ford character. And um, <clears throat> it was definitely hard. It was kind of a it, it, you know you was a point and click game, so you didn't push many keys on the keyboard. It was more like the mouse. But it was it, it was real puzzly. Like you really had to figure stuff out. And, and my buddy owned it and. I played it for a bit, and uh, I don't know. Never played it again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we we got to watch the original uh, before we go see that one, just to make sure we get all our facts. Oh yeah, and of the course. origin story. <laughs> well, let's see what else we have what? here. What? <laughs> I feel like dancing. What? What? Uh, yeah. Shh, yeah. Shh. What you got? <laughs> the uh, final story here is that Dumbo live action remake cast release date revealed. Tim Burton is confirmed to direct the film, which will hit theaters on March 29th, 2019. You know he's going to have some like gothic looking circus in there. Uh, well, I <laughs> am a big fan of... Uh, Mr. Burton, we'll have to see how he goes. And I like elephants. <laughs> <laughs> it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> Disney also confirmed some major casting, including Colin Farrell, Danny De- DeVito, Eva Green, Michael Keaton. Michael uh, Keaton, too. 
Tim Burton back into his house. Uh, Nico Parker and Finley Hobbins. Disney's official description is as follows. Holt Ferrier Farrell is a former circus star who finds his life turned upside down when he returns from the war. Circus owner Max Medici, which is played by DeVito, enlists Holt to care for a newborn elephant whose oversized ears make him a laughing stock in an already struggling circus. But when Holt's children, Parker and, Ro- and Hobbins, discover that Dumbo can fly, persuasive entrepreneur V.A. Vanderveer, played by Keaton, and his aerial artist named Colette Marchant, Marchant, maybe perhaps, uh, who's played by Green, swoop in to make the peculiar a star. Variety reported on Burton and Keaton's potential involvement back in April. This marks the first time the two have worked together since 1992's Batman Returns. So. Indeed. You know, Danny DeVito already played a circus ringleader in another movie. I forgot if it was directed by uh, Burton or not, but. Um, it's a uh, two. Oh, big fish. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, it's two syllables. Big fish. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the hints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, that is a very good point. I, I am just really excited that Michael Keaton and Tim Burton are back together again. Really, Russ? You don't seem excited. I'm uh, I'm uh, so excited. The, uh, the, the old nipples are uh, at oh, the geez. chicken is done stage. <laughs> So anyway, let us get into the topic of the day, which is the D23 conference. Um, Sounds good here, Russ. I know that we have talked a bit about D23 here and there, but um, since the the conference has come and gone, I've been able to, to acquire several articles that really make me excited to check out all things Disney here. So, Well, come on! So I guess lay it on me. So to start things off, I think mm-hmm. what you think, Ross? I think it's, it's I think it's appropriate to, to to tell folks that I have never been to D twenty three. Yeah, it's important to I I have never been either, Russ. Yeah, you might not know that about me. Yeah, no, I, I surprisingly <laughs> I do know that. Okay, <clears throat> but um, anyway, D twenty three has not been around all that long. I want to say that. The show has probably been around for about five years, okay. somewhere around there. Okay. Maybe a little longer. I'm not exactly sure, but so it's it's still relatively new. And it, for the most part, I think that the show has been attempting to find its footing in terms of what it is that they're about, mm. what types of exclusive content that they're going to show, mm. because... When you think about it, D23 is the weekend before Comic-Con starts. Right. And since Disney owns Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Pixar, that is something that I think they have been trying to to strike a balance in terms of what are they going to show at D23 versus what are they going to show at Comic-Con. And we'll have a better idea of what they will have shown when we uh, speak to Bradley, as well as uh, look at... uh, the usual social media news and all that fun stuff. But anyway, wanted to say that up front um, as kind of a precursor to what we're going to talk about, because I think that they finally have hit a bit of a mark in terms of uh, where their sweet spot is in terms of what they can talk about at the show that can be more exclusive to the D23 experience as opposed to SDCC. So to start things off, D23 Conference News, every upcoming Disney Pixar animated film that's scheduled. Mm-hmm. So there's a new one called Coco. And I, and again, these are just the names. I, I don't have any pictures. I don't know what this stuff looks like. If, if any of you out there happen to know uh, or stumble upon any kind of media regarding these films, by all means, share it with us um, at... Uh, uh, Joygasm TV, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook, they'd be much obliged. Isn't Coco the uh, the gorilla who knows sign language? Well, there, yeah, the, that's the the gorilla from uh, I believe it's the San Francisco Zoo. I don't know, uh, but no, I I you know what? Who knows? Who knows, Russ? I am not yeah, all don't knowing shut here. Shut me down. I'm not going to shut you down. I'm shutting you up. Maybe oh, it, or maybe it's about <laughs> chocolate. 
Chocolate. Cocoa? Chocolate? Oh, uh-uh. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah, you don't like that, chocolate too much, you know? I, I, I like cocoa. Oh, you want? Forget you. I like a little bit of uh, a <laughs> little whipped cream on top of the cocoa. Anyway, they have cocoa, The Incredibles 2. Yes. Wreck-It Ralph 2. Have you ever seen the first Wreck-It Actually, Ralph? Actually, no. I, I haven't seen Wreck-It Ralph. I you gotta, owe it to yourself to no. watch the first one. That was a good movie. I'll put it on the list. Uh, there is an untitled Disney Toon Studios film, but they just kind of whispered it out there. <laughs> it's not going to be anything big. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we're, we're not, we're not going to tell you the name. Right, it's, just, it's just a hush, hush. film. Hmm. Shh. Toy Story 4. Wow. Frozen 2, which that was uh, not a surprise to me. I mean, yeah. the original Frozen right. was gangbusters. There's another film called Gigantic. And I, I heard about that one. And actually, and, and there's another all new original film that's not yet titled. They actually have two of those in here. So I guess they just wanted to kind of throw those in there at the last minute. But anyway, a lot of films in there that I'm actually really excited to see. I, I need to see me some Incredibles too. I have been waiting since the first Incredibles yeah, movie came out. I'm thinking this, this is the film that deserves a sequel. Like if Absolutely. there was ever a Pixar movie that like needs to have like sequel after sequel after sequel, it's the Incredibles that is ripe. I for know. Just like, totally exploring through. Yeah. It. They, they were given sequels to toy story and then they started giving sequels to cars and, uh, yeah. and finding Nemo. I'm thinking, what about the Incredibles? What? Come yeah. on. Yeah. I'm, I think, oh, you know what? Uh, We're going to have to find out man. if Brad Bird is going to direct the sequel. I hope he is. He was the one who directed the the original Incredibles. I can't remember if you know this already or not, but Brad Bird also directed The Iron Giant. Mm. Okay. Wait, have you seen The Iron Giant? I own it, Russ. Okay. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah, uh, The pause gave me pause. Well, I don't remember, I don't remember seeing his name in the, in the credits, but then again, I probably wasn't looking. Yeah, Brad Bird is a super talented director. So let's see here. Okay. Um, Aladdin live action cast was revealed. Um, oh, I thought they were having trouble placing the cast. Weren't we talking about that in a different show? Was it Aladdin or was it some other Disney flick? They're like, yeah, we're having trouble casting uh, for this one. And uh, I, I scarcely remember, but I don't know if it was for Aladdin or a different film. Yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, Mina Masoud will play Aladdin in the film, while Power Rangers' Naomi Scott will play Jasmine. Disney also confirmed that Will Smith will play Genie. Huh. And get this. Guy Ritchie is confirmed to direct. Uh, uh, Mind equals blown. Yeah. I don't even know how to like conjure that up in my brain, but uh, I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious sure. to see how that's going to be. The inspiration for the film will be both the animated Disney hit as well as the classic collection of stories, 1001 Nights. So... I can't see Will Smith being the genie after Robin Williams. I mean, Robin Williams was the genie in that movie. Yeah. He stood out probably more than anybody else. Um, but I mean, I'm, I can see Guy Ritchie doing it because he's talented. He's got a lot of skill right? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of style. Let me put it that way. But I, I, I just don't know about Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah. I, the jury is out. How about that? The jury is out for that. Go. The jury's out to lunch. The Dis- jury's out to cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> freebies for everybody Disney's big Marvel theme park plans mm-hmm. include Guardians of the Galaxy yes Spider-Man yes and Avengers oh so I uh, check this out at D23 Expo Seth Macy and Eric Goldman reported Disney's announcement of Marvel based attractions coming to Disney California Adventure at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim during its Parks and Rec- excuse me, Parks and Resorts panel at D23 Expo. Uh, Bob, I'm going to say Chapik. I don't know if it's Chapik or Chapik. I apologize. Um, Disney, who is the Disney's Parks and Resort chairman, revealed Spider-Man and the Avengers will be joining Guardians of the Galaxy at the park on the heels of the recently debuted Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout attraction, but didn't go into specifics. You know what would be cool? As if they had a uh, a guy in a big Hulk suit, you know, air conditioned like crazy, but you know, <laughs> and so he, he looks like Hulk uh, with the shorts and the green skin and totally buffed out, and he's and he just walks through the park and just has that gr- like that sneer on his face, oh, yeah. and he like he wants to pose, he just kind of goes and then you know click sort of thing. Doesn't talk to anybody. He's just there in the Marvel universe. You oh know? sure. 
Well, it, and th- this is like a dream come true for me, as I'm sure millions oh, of others out there, because you I don't mean, it, don't, it, don't cry when you tell me this. Don't cry. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, like as a kid, I got some tissues for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I remember as a kid just wishing, and I remember we would even have like those fun conversations about wouldn't it be cool if there was a place where you could just go and enjoy all of your uh, geek interests in one place. And I feel like Disney is just really at the precipice of doing that where they're just able to combine all of the classic Disney licenses. Then they have Pixar with all of their characters there. They have Marvel with, and they're obviously exercising that license to try and bring that up. So then you'll be able to see Captain America and the Hulk and Thor. I mean, all of them just, just uh, moving around Spider-Man, that sort of thing. And then they have Lucasfilm with the star Wars. I mean, it's just like, Bro date. (laughs) (laughs) An official blog post from Disney Parks calls the Marvel plans for California Adventure a, quote, completely immersive superhero universe where guests can team up with your favorite superheroes like never before. Seemingly hinting mission breakout could mark the beginning of a full Marvel-based land within our, um, oh, excuse me, land within the park. It remains to be seen if the Spider-Man and Avengers specific plans are for two new rides or another form of entertainment. This summer characters meet and greet slash interact um, where, where it's, what, what, what is it saying? I'm sorry. My notes are a little, I think what it's, what they're trying to say is this summer character meet, bleh, this summer character meet and greet interaction opportunities were added at California Adventure for Spider-Man, Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Groot, Star-Lord, and Gamora. Um, so it sounds like they've got these grandiose plans, and especially like if you're able to interact with some of them where you get to have your kids go with them on some sort of little mission through the park or something like that, that'd be fun. It's just, I uh, that sounds like such a cool job. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine being a Disney Imagineer and you're sitting there like, hey, we should have all these yeah. superheroes running amok through the park <laughs> with the kids. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Bob, we're going to give you a blank check. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to your kids, find out what, they're, what they think is going to be cool, and just do it. Yeah. Okay, let's just do it. Everybody, everybody who likes comic books, Johnson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 we need you to do a special assignment for Disney. <laughs> you get a blank check too. <laughs> In addition, a new Guardians of the Galaxy ride, different from Mission Breakout, was also announced. I want to get in the Epcot spaceship at Walt Disney World in Orlando. I want the I want the spaceship. <sighs> this is gonna be high telling you, dude. <laughs> it's a good time to be alive. It's a good time to also be a geek because this type of stuff right here is just. <sighs> Beautiful, Ross. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm gonna cry. I'm getting all misty eyed. Disney's Star Wars Hotel. There is a Disney Star Wars Hotel. I don't know if I'd like that or not because if I look, if I think back to all the Star Wars stuff and scenes, I'm thinking, yeah, that's cool, but it doesn't look like it's comfortable. Comfortable, <laughs> yeah, plush. You know, I, <laughs> I'm sure they will find a way. <laughs> Anyway, the Disney Star Wars Hotel will be the ultimate role play experience. Oh, for mommy and daddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be Darth Vader. You're going to be Slave Leia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Star Wars. Costumes provided in the closet. Like, oh, look at this. <laughs> you like end up being Yoda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to be Jabba. Six of you, mate. Yeah, Yeah, you're Chewbacca. (laughs) Oh, man. Star Wars theme park lands coming to Disneyland and Walt Disney World and how you can go even bigger by staying at an amazing sounding Star Wars Disney Resort. That's pretty cool. I've... Once again, it's like, what hotel am I going to stay at? Like, they're they're making all these cool hotels in addition to the hey, park. We'll, we'll we'll go. I'll stay in one. You stay in the other, and then we'll swap. <sighs> it's, it's just it's, it's beautiful. It's just wonderful. you got to start making more money, Russ. I do. I need to. Uh, I need. I need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see. I want. I want to see if I can find some new info. Like, matter of fact, I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let's see. <laughs> that was good. Uh, let's see. I want to see more Guardians of the Galaxy ride announcements here. The D23 Expo today, Disney announced new attractions coming to Walt Disney World will include Guardians of the Galaxy, Ratatouille, and Tron. Yes! Coming to Epcot, it doesn't look like the Guardians of the Galaxy attraction will be a version of the Guardians of the Galaxy oh, Mission man. Breakout ride. What they gotta have, if the, the Ratatouille thing is, they gotta have like really exquisite bite sized foods for people to try. Oh, yeah. I mean, wouldn't that draw a bunch of That's all what that movie was about the mm-hmm. cooking and the food and imagination. The flavor, yeah. Ugh. It looks like this is an, an entirely new experience. I'm hungry. <laughs> Uh, the Guardians ride will be located in the future world area of Epcot and replace the universe of an energy attraction. I don't even remember what that was. That's probably why they're replacing it. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Another upcoming Epcot attraction will be Ratatouille, which will be, okay, here you go. Be similar to Ratatouille the Adventure at Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris, in Paris. In the Ratatouille attraction, guests will, quote, be able to shrink to Remy's size and scurry to safety in a dazzling chase across a kitchen with the sights, sounds, and smells of Gusteau's legendary, uh, oh, I'm going to say this wrong, Parijon restaurant? Parijon? Parijon? Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm butchering it. Parmesan. Par- yeah, no, that's Italian. <laughs> um, also re- officially announced at D23 Expo was a Tron ride coming to Tomorrowland and Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom That's and an good. entirely newer area next to Space Mountain. This I want to ride a motorcycle, a Tron motorcycle. Oh, dude, that'd be so cool. Awesome. This will be the first U.S. version of the popular Tron light cycle power run coaster ah! style attraction. Oh, man. And which was from uh, Shanghai Disneyland. Oh, dude. My goodness. Let's see, what, what other kind of nuggets they have from D23? Ooh, Avengers Infinity War, Thanos Black Order confirmed to appear. New posters have been revealed. You know, I'm almost too excited about the uh, all that stuff you just said. Rather than you go, <laughs> and then all Thanos, I'm thinking, yeah, but Ratatouille I know. and Tron. I'm telling you, dude, like, like they really <laughs> hit a grand slam this year. It's and about time. Andrew Goldfarb reports at the Marvel Studios booth. At D23 Expo today, Marvel revealed that the Black Order will appear in Avengers Infinity War, the film. The Black Order serves as henchmen for Infinity War and Big Bad Thanos, and their appearance was further confirmed on Twitter by Marvel Studios co-president Louis Despacito. Ugh, I'm sorry. Nice Louis Despacito. Esposito. We're going to send you to Names Linguistic School. Seriously. I feel <laughs> awful. I really do sincerely apologize. I, I'm having trouble pronouncing some of these names. It's just, oh, I, I can be taught. It just takes time. Uh, let's see. Better you than me. Apparently, the Black <laughs> Order are just uh, being called the children of Thanos. So and They're bad. They're, they're very bad. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Train announced for Disney's Hollywood Studio. I didn't even know Disney. This is, I am long overdue to go to a Disney theme park. Just don't get kicked off the carousel again. (laughs) (laughs) Story for another time. Yeah, story for another time. We'll have to talk about that. Seth Macy reports the first ever Mickey Mouse ride at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Walt Disney World has revealed during a panel at D23. Mickey and Minnie Runaway Train features, quote, mind-boggling transformations that happen right before your very eyes, according to Kevin Rafferty, Disney's uh, Imagineer. I wish uh, I had that job. That's, uh, that sounds awesome. Kevin, I'm going to give you a blank check. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of blank checks going on around here. It's okay. Comic-Con's raking in all sorts of cash. We need to get it out of that. <laughs> the... The ride begins as though you're watching a new Mickey and Minnie short. On their way to a picnic, the duo passes a train with Goofy as the engineer. From there, you'll get to step into the movie screen and onto Goofy's train. Ah, A little optical illusion goodness there. Sweet. Quote, we're doing this by creating for the first time ever a totally new experience we are calling 2 and a half d which is what I, I, I use that term quite a bit in my line of work when I'm working with uh, motion graphics. He told the audience at the Parks and Resorts panel, quote, no glasses required. Sweet. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to check that I out. I don't like those glasses. 
The ride will have more hidden Mickeys than any other ride appropriately known. Oof, I like some hidden Mickeys. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> High five. All oh, right. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, stop touching me. <laughs> <laughs> Disney announces Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> Details. You still got Mickey on the brain, don't you? Yeah, Mickey on the brain. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, during the Disney Parks and Resorts panel at D23 Expo, Disney revealed new details. For, this is what I'm. Oh, this is another thing I'm super excited oh, about. Oh, here it goes. Details for the upcoming Star Wars themed land coming to Disneyland and Walt Disney World, along with its official title, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So let's see here. BB-8, Chewbacca, and Kylo Ren were announced as characters that you'll encounter along the way in Galaxy's Edge which takes place during the First Order Resistance era at a remote trading port. Galaxy's Edge will also reach deeper into Star Wars lore, including Hondo from the animated series Star Wars Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and Rex, the droid pilot from the original version of Star Tours. I loved Rex from the original Star Tours, who will be seen as the DJ inside the local cantina. <gasps> and yes, Steve, you can order blue milk there. Nice. More was also mentioned about how immersive Galaxy's Edge will be as what you do in one area of the land can affect you elsewhere. One example given was the Millennium Falcon ride where the where you control the Falcon. Sweet. If you turn out to not be a great pilot and damage the ship too much, a bounty hunter named Harkos could be looking for you at the aforementioned cantina afterwards. Well, that's going to be kind of hard because I, if I remember correctly, the cockpit's all the way on the left-hand side of yep. the Millennium Falcon yep. and you get means. Trying to shoulder the right hand side of the ship oh. might be a tad difficult. Actually, wait, was the cockpit on the left hand side? Wait, wait, hold on a second. I'm thinking about. It. Think about it. Right? Uh, you know what? It, I think it may be worth you doing a little image Google search. I think the cockpit may be located on the right hand side. Well, I guess that's all how you look on it. Why don't you go ahead? And, <laughs> we are not moving forward until you find out. This okay. is this is too important. Google. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this. Siri. Was the Millennium Falcon cockpit on the right side or the left? Here's what I found on oh, the Siri can't help me. I'm oh, crying out loud. Why did you fail us, Siri? <laughs> <laughs> While you're looking for that, I'll continue on here. Uh, da -da -da -da. But, yep. I, but I haven't updated my software yet, so I, it might be my fault that didn't happen. <laughs> the other major attraction besides the Millennium Falcon is set inside the hangar bay of a Star Destroyer and is described on the official Disney Parks blog as, quote, an attraction built on a scale we've never done before, end quote. Both Disneyland in uh, Anaheim, California, and Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida are getting Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in 2000. Oh, excuse me. Hello, burpy burp. Galaxy's Edge in 2019, and it was revealed that the Disneyland version will open first, though no exact dates were given. Yet. There's George Lucas's hamburger patty uh, right there. I was right. It's on the right-hand side. No, but see, I'm looking at it face on, and it's, it's, on, it's, <laughs> and it's on the left. <laughs> oh. All I, they got to have the sound effects right, though. I mean, when that thing, when that thing takes off, you know it's the Millennium Falcon. So if you if you put that thruster, yeah, it's gotta have, it's gotta do it, right? I'm telling you, dude, I am going to be freaking out. I'm going to be this middle aged white guy freaking out at Disneyland due to all of what we were just. I mean, we're not even done yet. I have, I have another article to go down. Um, you, you know what's going to uh, happen? Talk about is you're going to fly the Millennium Falcon, and then get out, and then someone else is going to go by in Luke Skywalker's little desert speeder. And you're like, hey. Hey, I'll do that next. You yeah. know, it's like, hey, you just, you just got out of the Falcon. I'm in the speeder. <laughs> Kick one of the kids out. Yeah. Oh, it's my turn. I'm the bigger kid. Parents come over. Hey, what are you doing to my kid, man? <laughs> Age before beauty. Yeah. Uh, the final article regarding D23 here is that the Nutcracker and the Four Realms release dates have been announced. Um, Disney announced that the release date for its upcoming live action fantasy film, The Nutcracker and the Four Realms, um, will star Kira Knightley, Helen Murren, Morgan Freeman, and Mackenzie Foy. I like me some Morgan Freeman. Yeah, I like me some Kira Knightley. <laughs> don't tell my wife that. Yeah, don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I like her in a completely celebrity yeah. crush kind of way. I like her on the silver screen. <laughs> She's uh, only. 
Very intelligent. <laughs> uh, let's see. Four Realms will be released on November 2nd, 2018. Uh, Kira Knightley plays the Sugar Plum Fairy, while Foy stars as the protagonist Clara, and Mirren plays Mother Ginger. Da-na-na, Freeman da-na-na, will star da-na-na, as da-na-na, Drosselmeyer. Uh, I'll be looking forward to that though too because I have always been a very big fan of the Nutcracker. In fact, uh, you are a Nutcracker. (laughs) I know you like to crack my nuts. That hurt. Anyway, I think that about wraps it up for this particular episode. Unless you had any other final thoughts regarding D23, Steve. Uh, you know, I, I did. And it's because of the onslaught of good information. I forgot. It's literally overwhelming when you stop to think. But you're like, wait, there was, there's that. And there's, wait, there's that out there too. I mean, you're just, yeah. you're kind of left with more of a, like a euphoric high. Yeah. You're like, oh, I don't, I cannot contain all of the goodness that was just shown to me, but yeah. uh, I know I'm happy. Whatever. Special thanks to Brad, though. Definitely a big shout out. Thank you to Brad, who took time out away from his family and eating dinner to be able to give us a little lowdown on what's going on at San Diego Comic-Con. And we'll be able to catch up with him again on episode 27. Also, I think it's worth noting that on episode 27, Nick no, also known as Big Baby Moose. That's right. 12th Moose is going to be coming back to um, hang out with us a bit and talk on several things, one of which is included, uh, oh, excuse me, included. One of the things is including Destiny 2 Beta. And he has a whole hoopla of information on that, which I'm very curious to hear about. So it'd be cool. We'll have both uh, Nick and Brad on the show collectively and it should be a good old time. So as always, you can find us on Twitter at joygasm TV as well as facebook.com slash joygasm TV. And actually right now it's a great time to be able to check us out, especially on Facebook because it's a one-stop shop for all things SDCC. We are uh, making a point to be able to post any kind of media or news headlines there. So that way you can get your fix when you see fit. We're also available on soundcloud.com slash joygasm TV. And if you do a search for joygasm TV on YouTube, uh, one of the things I will say is um, YouTube is a little behind. I'm still having to try and and get all the episodes caught up. And so we're, um, I think uh, by the time that this particular podcast goes out, we should be up to date, but I apologize for the inconvenience on that. However, I think that, uh, that's about it. I say it's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> Happy gaming, guys. Yeah.